Now I hope our part one video got us from thinking in terms of primitive camping to thinking in terms of improved camping. This of course means we need less stuff and it makes it easy to find camp spots. There's your basic expenses associated with improved camping and as it turns out um, that's because we don't stay in motels and eat in restaurants. So what we do instead is configure lightly. We have a chuck box, we have a ice chest, we have a water jug, a stove, and I actually ended up taking a camp table that I didn't really need. The water jug and the ice chest could have also been smaller since water is also available. We've had some chairs as well. Now the way we chose to do our sleeping arrangements was just with some air mattresses in a car. Of course, the big advantages to doing these vacations, well, number one, they're cheap. They're also great family experiences. And um, they give us the ability to spend our time outside instead of in a motel room. They put us in the right place at the right time. So now our goal on this trip was to be here at just the right moment in time. And in order to do that, we thought we'd start out in just out of Mexican hat at probably the prettiest place I know to watch a sunrise. Uh, as it turns out, these kids from Israel were also there, and we ended up watching the moon and Venus. This is a spectacular place to look out over the San Juan Goosenecks over into Monument Valley. Now, the second day, we just almost on a whim, we decided to go up to Flaming Gorge, and of course there's some beautiful stuff up that direction, uh, including of course this bridge, uh, the dam, and we ended up camping up there for one night as well. Now from looking at a map, I decided that the best place to see this uh, eclipse would be up out of Casper, Wyoming. Well, at least that would be the easiest place to find a good spot. This is a spot just south of Casper, and of course they didn't have any camping spots. But we did end up staying right here the night before the eclipse. Now the next morning, uh, we of course got to watch the eclipse, and then we decided to book it right on up to the Devil's Tower that same day. The trick here is that we got there early, so we didn't have any trouble finding a camping spot, and that is your camping tip. Get there early, ideally around 1, that's before the checkout time, and, and uh, that way you'll find uh, the most possible places to camp. Um, this was really a great little venture around the Devil's Tower, too. It's not far from Devil's Tower over to Rushmore. So, of course, that's kind of a no-brainer, and it turned out that uh, we did all that in the morning, got over there, went through our little tour in the morning, ended up uh, finishing up about 1, went down to the campground. Again, no problem whatsoever finding a camp spot. Now, the next day, we needed to book on down toward uh, uh, Colorado, but first we thought we'd go over to Wall Drug. <laughs> it's a pretty interesting spot. And... Um, then from there you get to the Badlands of uh, South Dakota. Uh, it turns out they, to me, they look a lot like uh, the Painted Desert in Arizona, but a uh, pretty cool spot. Um, the thing is though, we made it out of there and made it all the way down to a place called Pathfinder Lake in Wyoming, and uh, that's where we spent that particular night. From there, we were really heading toward uh, Paonia, Colorado to see Gretchen's brother and um, you know there's a whole lot more to that story that I'll probably tell you in some other videos. Go camping.